Hello and welcome. This is your August 2023 bonus reading for each sign. Um, this video is timestamped, so right, um, so you don't have to watch the whole shebang. Um, it's timestamped, like I said. But what is different about this um, bonus reading is that I want you to see everything I say to your sign um, through the eyes of the planet that rules your sign or governs you. Not going to be difficult, I just want you to understand that you are part of the universe and therefore understanding what your imprints are helps you when listening to the message. Okay, anyway, shall we get going? Aries, you are governed by Mars, a fiery problem, a fire problem, fiery planet. <laughs> Maybe it's a problem, I don't know. A fiery planet. And Mars is associated with understanding your energy levels, right? Really, really important. Um, so whatever the guides are saying to you, also look at it from whatever the message is. How does that affect my energy levels? How does that affect how I go about my daily business, so that sort of stuff. And then Mars's energy is also associated with lust. So should the guides talk about um, the energy of love, you know, there is a physical aspect to this. Now when it comes to Mars, there's a physical aspect anyway, because Mars obviously is associated with your energy levels and the body houses the soul. So um, while I have no idea what the guys are going to say, I have two decks here, um, a moon deck and an astrology deck. And um, ultimately, all I want you to do is to understand the message with regards to your physicality and the topics I just mentioned. Are you ready? Okay, Aries, let's see what the guides have got for you. This is your August 2023 bonus reading with myself. Thomas Janak. And this is interesting because I just told you that I have two decks here, right? I have an astrology deck and a moon deck. And from the from the, the astrology deck, you have the moon card. <laughs> so this is about uh, 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 your, your emotions. The first thing that happens here is that the moon was a or is a piece of earth. You know right, moon? My cat is just down here is a piece of earth. So the Native Americans call the moon the grandmother because um, an asteroid sheared off about a quarter of earth, it became our moon, um, and the moon obviously is earth and affects our tides, all these kind of stuff. The point is that the grandmother that the moon is now called by many um, shamanic tribes around the globe means that there is a an energy here already by the moon as a being coming out of the first deck which is not the moon deck um, has to do with at this point in time whatever it is that you hear here really weird. <laughs> there's no quick solutions there's no fast answers here what you have is the moon which is about perception which is about how do i actually see the world right so you have the moon and the number on the card is is 19 one and nine is 10. so one is about new beginnings so you're moving towards new beginnings coming towards the end of a cycle my feeling is that that end of the cycle will be will be more reached when the time is right, which means it is very likely going to be September-ish, because September is the ninth month, nine is the number of completion. So it feels to me that whatever the guides are highlighting here for you has to do with how you feel about walking away from someone um, or making your feelings, feelings known to someone and bring that to another level. So again, this is a general reading, it, I, I understand it will not resonate with all of you. But when it comes to 
manifesting relationships and when it comes to making relationships that you may be in work what the guys are saying is number one everything has to do with how do you see it does whatever your partner says rings true does whatever it is you say ring true to yourself is this about somehow um, trying to make compromises which oftentimes will not be able to be sustained because the outgoing card which is from the moon deck is expect powerful change so what the guides are saying is uh, because you have the moon the moon is about your emotions right um and perception you know how do you see things and then the next card is how you look at things affects the outcomes so point point is remember the, the the native americans call the moon the grandmother she can only watch over her children but she cannot hug them again the symbolism the point here is you have to allow yourself to be detached when you look at relationships now the bonus reading here for the sign of aries is about relationships Right? which has to do with the fact that we're looking at it from the filter or through the filter of your governing planet, which is Mars. Now, the interesting thing about the second card is that you have also the new moon eclipse here. So what that means is that the new moon, there's no, no light, right? There's no illumination, which means you, have, you, have, you are allowed to step back, see things without um, being distracted. And then the eclipse is also saying, you know, this so-called drive that you want to do things quickly, which means the sun, uh, sorry, the moon blocks the sun, hence the eclipse, or eclipses the sun, for want of a better word. Do not overreact. Take your time with anything and everything that comes through. Really, really important. But understand that you first have to truly look at the relationship you are in or the relationship that you're trying to manifest you have to be honest about what you find and how you see things so what i'm getting strongly is because mars is a is a is fiery the reason why it is obviously your governing planet is because aries is a fire sign so the energy of fire means you know i'm not taking prisoners here which is also Aries being the first sign, you know, out of the gate doing something new. And then your first card, the moon, nine and one is ten. When you take the, the zero away, uh, it becomes one again. So this is all related to the tendency of Aries to sometimes brush over things rather than stopping and looking at things in depth. Hence the new moon asks you not to have 25 million things to do but step back and reflect on your relationship. Okay, Aries, that was your August 2023 bonus reading with myself, Thomas Janak. Please like, subscribe and share. And if you like my work, you can now buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium Thomas. That's buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium Thomas. Now, moving on to Taurus first earth sign in the in, in the reading you are governed by venus so what venus stands for is obviously wanting to be loved needing to be loved but wanting to give love is also quite important now i said that in other videos when it came up when venus came up venus is the only planet in our solar system that does not rotate the same way all the other planets in our solar system do apart from venus all planets go anti-clockwise and anti-clockwise means whenever there's stuff that doesn't that doesn't really work anti-clockwise movement means i'm taking shit out right this isn't working for me i'm taking it away in the case of venus taurus by default you are oftentimes allowing for harmony to overpower and override reality. So what the guides are saying to you is 
again, it's very much a bit like 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 Aries. I mean, you know, this is a timestamp video, so very likely you haven't watched Aries, but obviously it's a sign before you. And what came up here is to be detached enough to see things for what they are um, and not painting a nicer picture. And, and what Venus does, obviously, is to um, not necessarily act, right? Um, anyway, I want you to listen to whatever the guides have to say through that filter of understanding that it is in your imprints to wanting to have harmony in the home, um, keep energies safe, right? Um, and oftentimes in Taurian's energy, you don't want to escalate things. The problem is when you do escalate things because you're sort of a kick-ass in your face, fuck off sign, um, <coughs> you become defensive quite a lot. Now remember, when you look at it logically, imagine you say something, that you feel is true, but you're talking to someone about it. And if the other person is immediately defensive, isn't there a part in that person that is immediately defensive that um, has problems hearing what you have to say, right? There's, a, there's an old saying, truth needs no defense. Um, I don't know who said it. I always believe it was me that brought it up because I, 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 I keep saying this, have kept saying it for years. I'm sure it's a quote of someone else. If anybody knows, leave it in the in the description box. I always walk around saying to people, truth needs no defense. And, you know, it's true. And it sounds like something I could say. So I say it. Anyway, if someone knows if this is a quote I'm using, if so, I have completely um, forgotten who came up with that sentence, which is a good sentence, by the way. So please see it through the, through the, the filter of leaving harmony for way longer than you probably should. Anyway, I got two decks here. I got a, uh, an astrology deck and I got the moonology deck. So we're combining these two. This is your August 2023 bonus reading for the sign of Taurus. Now, the first thing you have is Vesta um, and the number of change and then the second one is to surrender to the divine right so you have Vesta so you have the number 32 3 and 2 is the number of 5 3 but on its own is the number of progression 2 on its own is the number of relationships right so this is about again more like um love relationships rather than family because Toreans are quite uh, focused on family. I'm not getting this. This has to do with something more intimate. And what the guides are saying is, you know, your light is always on. Again, whether or not this is healthy lies in the eye of the beholder. What you are having next is to understand that you're always willing to give, right? Remember, the guides have said to you, um, see it through the filter of your governing planet. You know, keeping the light on, in a home that isn't working might not be the best approach. Ultimately, you have to surrender to the divine, which means you have to be absolutely honest to yourself. And because there is a full moon depiction here, I don't know if you can see there's a full moon depiction, the full moon, just like your light, is fully illuminated. So when you really look at things, you will feel precisely and see precisely what is and isn't working and what the guides are saying is to you be honest does it make sense to keep harmony right how often do i create a harmony rather than looking at the issues right so that's what i'm getting here for taurus especially through the filter of your governing planet venus okay moving on to gemini Gemini, this is your August 2023 general reading, bonus reading for the months of August 2023 with myself, Thomas Janak. Please like, subscribe and share. And if you like my work, you can now buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium thomas. That's www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium thomas. Now, what I do differently here in this um bonus reading for the month of August 
I trust that you have watched what the guys have to say to you about the month of August. This is a bonus reading. But I'm looking at the energy of your governing planet. It used to be called your ruling planet. As a matter of fact, 95% of people that do astrology still call it that. I call it a governing planet because I don't want to be ruled. And so I'm not emphasizing on that word. Even though your ruling planet slash governing planet means well. The problem is <laughs> that your governing planet Gemini is Mercury and because Mercury goes into retrograde more often than any other planet finding the right words finding the right thing to say can be difficult uh, and then when you combine it with being a Gemini which means there is this energy of your inner voice not always being fully fully there if that makes sense um, you are not a person necessarily that gives yourself a lot of extra support. What the guides are basically asking you to do here is to look at whatever the guides have to say now through the lens of being governed by Mercury. Right? Understand whatever the guides are saying is has to be approached from how do I go about it? Is this something I need to communicate stronger? Right? And it might be a bit clearer when we get uh, the, the messages, actually. But um, this is not, oh, I'm listening to the, to the, to the energy and I, uh, and I take it or leave it. Even though you have that option at all times, I'm just a reader. You know, um, this is just astrology reading. It doesn't necessarily have to govern your life. See what I did there? But you understand the concept. What the guides are saying is, see it through the eyes of Mercury. Now, here's another thing. Mercury takes only three months to uh, orbit the sun. So Mercury oftentimes runs before uh, he can walk. I should say he, she or it because uh, Mercury is one of only two planets that is um, gender neutral, which means the energy of Mercury becomes what it is you need. Therefore, if you are in the, in the, in the zone of making things sound better than they are, right mercury will let you do that right also interesting that mercury is the closest planet to 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 the sun but not the hottest so sometimes this whole feeling of now i'm gonna say something there's so much power behind it but the energy of arguments which is mercury's unfortunately downside um choosing words poorly um is not really sustainable so Gemini's answer to everything is always to not fight if it doesn't have to, to come to it, right? But communication is in your nature. And so um, we have to look at this through that filter. Gemini, are you ready? Let's have a look. Wow, okay. <laughs> Bloody hell. Anyway. We were just talking about how close your governing planet Mercury is to the Sun. And then your first message, your first card is Leo. Leo is governed by the Sun. And while Leo asks you to shine, the proximity to the Sun for Geminis can tire you out because of too much heat coming in at once. So what the guides are saying to you, in other words, if there is anything that needs to be discussed, do it now. Do not procrastinate. Do not wait. The other animal uh, energy card here is a personal issue reaches resolution. So what the guides are saying to you is whatever is coming up right now that needs to be looked at will not come out of the blue. It's not a brand new thing. This is a topic that has been with you for quite some time. Now is the time to approach this, but understand if it is already tedious, you cannot sustain being in a place where the pressure is just too much. Uh, okay, so this has to come to a conclusion. That's why your message here is that, um, you know, a personal issue reaches resolution, um, which means the universe is supporting you to either let things go or make changes so that things can work easier for you. Really, really important. 
Gemini. Thank you so much. Moving on to Cancer. Cancerians, hello and welcome to your August 2023 bonus reading. With myself, Thomas Janak, you are watching Thomas's Tower Readings. Please like, subscribe and share. And if you like my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium thomas. That's buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium thomas. Now, what we do here, Cancerians, I trust that you have watched the video for your sign for the month because this is just a bonus reading. And what we do here is a slightly different to what we normally do. It's just the way this flows this time. We are looking through the, or we are looking at the message through the filter of your ruling slash governing planet. Now, Cancerians, as you very likely know, you are governed by the moon. So you are governed by your emotions quite a lot. But because you're governed by a being that goes through phases all the time and repeats them all the time, moving on from things properly is not a strength of cancer because the depiction of cancer is actually two claws, but they are crab claws. <laughs> and and the crab, I can't pronounce that word very well, is an animal that sort of hides in crevices when problems are there. So you either distract yourself massively, <laughs> if that makes sense, right? Or you repeat, again, this is just your imprint, or you repeat and attract, therefore, a lot of the same issues. Just bear that in mind um, and, and look at and hear the messages through that filter of, okay, is that something I've done before, right? Hence the, the repetition. Is that something I'm shying away from, right? That is the filter. The guides are asking you to hear the message through. That said, Cancerians, let's look at the message. Let's have a look. All right. First of all, before we go anywhere, let me just tell you that the first card is the sun. Now, the sun and the moon do not share space well, right? So where they overlap, there oftentimes is uh, energy uh, eclipses can happen, but it can also be quite freeing, right? But on a whole, in a birth chart, what you really want to want to see, for instance, is the sun and the moon far away. But together, they can also make a great team. So you are governed by the moon. The first thing, the first message that came out is to look at the sun. While the alignment of the moon and the sun will never be perfect, right? <laughs> Oftentimes when they are in a good aspect and they support each other, which only really happens when they are in a good aspect, I probably should say, um, there is support from an energy that is much stronger most of the time than your energy. That doesn't mean that the moon is not as strong as the sun, but the sun doesn't take prisoners. While the moon weighs up a lot of things, right? Because when you have to go through phases, your only really strong moment is the full moon. And halfway through it, you reach the point of, I need to recharge, which would be the new moon, right? So the point is what the guides are saying to you is, we are already sending you a lot of support, but you have to be aligned as best as you can. Ah, I need to show this to you. That wasn't my plan because it hasn't healed yet. Um, the body houses the soul. I, at this point in time, am very drawn to anything in astrology. I have been for quite some time, obviously, hence the channel. <laughs> But I have um, a blue moon tattooed on my right hand, right, my emotional side, and the sun, which is not healed yet, so I can't really show this to you, on the other hand. So when you look at them together, they really shouldn't work. And at the same time, they're both powerful. So I have them on me to force them into balance. As a Pisces that I am, um, I find it difficult to stay in my strengths because the depiction of my sign is two fish, fishes that swim away. So I have that for a reason, right? 
And my uh, tagline for this channel, you probably have heard it before, is the sun is the ruler of the day, the moon is the ruler of the night, but you are the ruler of your own destiny. I was just drawn to showing this to you. I didn't mean to track this out, but the, the universe, obviously, because you're governed by the moon, right? And then they're sending you the sun for whatever reason. I only had this tattoo yesterday, so this would be a long time before this looks anywhere near like the other one. In any case, you have the sun and the sun is, sounds a bit weird, almost your source because wherever the sun sits when you are born becomes your star sign slash zodiac. So the sun was in Cancer, which is governed by the moon. So when you were born, you were born into an energy of opposition, right? That had to share the space that you're in, right? And managed. So what needs to end here is the repetition that your soul tends to do, if that makes sense. Manifesting the same crap. Maybe going to the same parties <laughs> longer than you should. That sort of energy. Um, and so what the guides are saying to you is very fittingly, um, you have to watch your dreams at this point in time. Really important. That's what I'm getting because also based on the message here. So because you're governed by the moon, which is about your emotions, you know, maybe sit back, you know, take a deep breath, you know, um, really focus on your breathing and, um, you know, and then do meditation because what the guides are asking you is to watch your dreams, if that makes sense. So the guides are trying to come through to you in your dreams. Now, but here's the point. Whatever you remember from your dreams, so this is how the guides are trying to reach you, needs a practical plan. So the guides are already talking to you. The guides are already helping um, you with, with finding solutions for whatever deep issues are going on at this point in time in your life, dear Cancerians. But they're coming to you in your dreams. So I would suggest, because obviously when we're dreaming, we, um, we change um, brainwaves, if that makes sense. So that's the reason why we don't really remember a lot of dreams about our dreams, um, I would suggest you just have a piece of paper and a pen next to your bed. And then should you wake up for whatever reason, if you are a person that needs to go to the bloody loo five times a night, make it work. <laughs> so what you say to yourself, you kind of go like, okay, I know the guides are talking to me every time I wake up. Let me write down a word. So in the morning, just before you do anything, try to be conscious of that fact. I come out of my dream. There must be something still in my brain that I can utilize. And you just write down a couple of words. You do this over a couple of days, you can normally see a pattern or a message. So that's what I'm getting, because the guides are saying is, what you need to really do sounds a bit wrong. You need to think things through, which is not something I, I, I can't pronounce a lot of THs. <laughs> th. The point is you understand that. If you really want change, you need to have some sort of a plan that te to tell yourself how not to repeat certain things. So therefore, which is also the strength of the moon. The moon has a lot of phases where the moon steps backwards, right? Um, so, uh, you, you know, like, like, like the new moon, um, where you are asked to um, go in, go within. And that's what the guys are asking you. So um, that was the message, rumbling on there. <laughs> that was the message. Always see it through the energy of your governing planet, the moon. Understand that repetition, going through phases that are rep repetitious, that are repeating themselves, is natural to Cancerians. But the question then becomes, how much does that serve me? And you have the right to overwrite whatever imprint you chose to have, because the belief is that you choose to be born to whom you're being born to, where and when. And with regards to the when, you chose your star sign slash zodiac. Cancerians, thank you so much. That was your August 2023 bonus reading with myself, Thomas Janak. Moving on to Leo. Leo, welcome. This is your August 2023 bonus reading. And what we do here, I ask you to see it through the filter of your governing planet. Now, you are governed 
by the sun. And that sometimes leads to the energy of Leo being overpowering. If you ever are in a state of being stressed, winding down is difficult. A part of Leo expects difficulties in life because the sun deals with, di with difficulties all the time because of the solar flares that the sun is exposed to and um, you know the explosions on the sun and kind of stuff that 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 affects the magnetic fields slash aura of of all of us especially those born into the sign of leo so what the guys are saying to you is whatever the guys have to say now make sure that you understand in order to reflect and act on things you have to watch whether or not you're you're in a state of pushiness, wanting to change things yesterday, or if you can actually find a way to relax and then reflect on the message that is coming your way. Or maybe it's a message where, where they're saying to you is, you know, go out there, kick ass, you know, start something, end something, that kind of stuff. In, in which case, your drive as a Leo governed by the sun would be helpful. In any case, with no further ado, let's have a look. Interesting. No, and you get more than, than, than two cards, if that makes sense. Okay, I have a, an astrology deck and I have a moonology deck. In the uh, astrology deck, or the first card that fell out, made a lot of sense because you have Mars. Mars is a fiery energy, right? And so is the sun. And the word here is motion. Standing still with regards to not dealing with problems. Maybe you feel like, oh, maybe I, I should do this until that month. This was sort of what I'm getting. Let me just sit with this because once I get to that stage, I can then make changes. And all the guys are saying is it doesn't work, right? You cannot really manifest happiness when you stay in a place that isn't for you, right? So there is motion here and it has to do with mass. Mass is aware of your energy level. So the, the longer you stay in situations that aren't for you, the less strength you have. And there's also the energy of having less self-belief. So once you are damaged, it will very likely be difficult for you to understand that some messages, some solutions could be found quite easily, right? Anyway, so um, that was the first energy here is that you have mass and the word of motion. So move forward, right? Don't allow the energy of procrastination or there's nothing I can do about it. I just sit here until blah, blah, blah happens, right? You cannot plan any of these things. You have no control over what's happening tomorrow. You only are in control of yourself. So projecting onto something just because, you know, you have signed a contract or someone gave you a timeline is not working so well for you. And then you have two more energies, two more messages, so to speak, even though they roll into one, because obviously this is all one big message here for Leo. So what you have is, which makes sense, you know, in a roundabout way, I already said that without saying it, look at the bigger picture, right? Which makes, obviously it makes perfect sense, right? Look at the bigger picture. So obviously you only do this when you're not trapping yourself, right? And then don't let your past hold you back. So if you felt, you know, um, I've, I've made such a big, uh, um, I've made progress, but I also made a big sacrifice by me moving here, coming here, that sort of energy is like, you know, starting over energy is here. Um, and if you felt um, it didn't work last time, um, then you will be more reluctant to do something about anything. All the guys are saying is, don't look at what happened in the past, Right? Because it does not mean it will happen again. And if it does happen again, if it is inevitable, let it happen and then reflect. How did I get to the same bloody point? But get out of whatever it is that isn't working for you. So reflect on what is not working for you. And then the motion energy, your first energy of Mars, uh, because Mars doesn't take uh, uh, um, prisoners, neither does the Sun, which governs your sign. Talk about it. 
Say to people, this is bollocks, I don't like this, let's talk about this, right? And be in your strengths, as Leos are meant to be. All right, thank you so much, Leos. Moving on to Virgo. Hello, Virgo. This is your August 2023 bonus reading with myself, Thomas Janak. You are watching Thomas's Tower reading with myself, Thomas Janak, like I just said. Please like, subscribe and share. And if you like my work, you can now buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium thomas. That's www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium thomas. Now, Virgos, what we do here, we're looking at the bonus message through the filter of your governing planet. And Virgo is governed by Mercury. Now, Mercury is a planet that is the most awkward, even though Pluto is also super awkward, <laughs> but again, in your case, you're governed by Mercury. Mercury goes into retrograde more often than any other planet. Therefore, it will be diff difficult for you at many a time in, in, in your life is to finish something through conversation, communication that could have been solved had you been in a better place if that makes sense, right? Where you could still um, converse properly before the shit hits the fan, that sort of energy. So what the guides are saying to you is, um, look at it through the energy of communication um, and through the energy of, of obviously your, your earth sign of understanding the way any conversation has to go is by being grounded. But because Mercury literally as, a, as, a, as an energy in your birth chart, Mercury can only ever be in your own sign or an adjacent one. If Mercury is in your sign, which I don't know, you have to look at your at your birth chart for that. Should it have should it have been, or should it have set in the sign when you were born, then you have the gift of the gob, right? Which a lot of people have that are governed by by Mercury, no matter where it sits. But if if Mercury has set in your sign, it will be easier for you to find words. And if it had, if, if Mercury had been in a, or has been or set in another sign, which is only an adjacent one, um, that's the only possibility Mercury has. It can only ever set in your sign or in an adjacent one. It doesn't stray that far from the sun. Um, so the first thing then is to understand that if he's not in your sign, then whatever you say, even though you know it's your truth, Mercury can make you doubt yourself because Mercury goes into retrograde four times a year right? Um, you can be quite a doubtful person at times, right? So therefore, if I know how to push your buttons, I will likely be able to make you feel guilty and make you feel guilt, which is one of the worst and, and least useful energies to feel. I want you to listen to the message that is coming up through that filter. Okay, so Virgo, let's have a look what the guys have got for you. Now, it's actually not bad. What, what that means is you have Venus and you have full moon in Libra. So Venus, Mercury and Mars are all very close together, if that makes sense, right? And so when you have Venus, which is about, you know, being loving, feeling loved, is so close to your governing planet Mercury, which means they're all in their planets here. Um, inner planets are personal planets. What the guides are asking you is to understand what you need to do at any stage is to progress away from anything that doesn't work, right? But do it in a loving way if possible. This is exactly why, why um, it, it can be difficult to be governed uh, by Mercury because Mercury oftentimes finds the words uh, or chooses poor words when he's not in, uh, uh, when he's retrograde, right? So, energetically speaking, what the guys are asking you, whatever uh, you're going through right now, now is the time to, to make that known and think it through before you converse. Now, what the guys are also saying is that there is a win-win outcome forecast. So, whatever you're going through, it has already been decided or looked at um, 
to be resolved. Now, the other important thing is that you have the full moon here in Virgo, right? And now we talked about how close Mercury and Mars and Venus are together, right? So they're quite together, if that makes sense. And Libra, which is the full moon in Libra, which is the win-win uh, outcome, um, is your next sign. Nothing here that you're going through that needs looking at will stray forever. Everything is close. So, you know, if there's any issues, look closer to home to see if there are cause there, if that makes sense, right? Don't look into the distance. Don't be distracted by, by stuff that isn't really <coughs> important at this point in time. Stick to what you can see, if that makes sense, right? Simply because the depiction and the flow of the, of the, of the planets here and the energies associated with them, and they can be felt here, um, they're all super close, which also means if you have a lot of close-knit planets, they're like allies. So you're not as alone as you, as you think you are, right? But it is now time for you to understand that things need to be overcome and they will be overcome. But it has to do with the fact that that is already manifested. So therefore, if there is anything you do to procrastinate, um, it won't work, right? So no procrastinations, Virgo. All right, moving to the next sign, Libra. You're right, Libra. <laughs> Libra, you are governed by Venus. This is your August 2023 bonus reading with myself Thomas Yannick. Please like, subscribe and share and if you like my work you can buy me a coffee on www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium Thomas. That's buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium Thomas. And what we do here, we will look at the message through the filter of your governing planet. Now your governing planet is the planet of love. So whatever the guides say to you, feel it rather than attempt to fully understand it. Libra is the sign of harmony and balance. What Libra oftentimes tends to fail to see is that the depiction of Libra is an old-fashioned scale. Nothing digital about it. <laughs> and an old-fashioned scale needs a counterweight <coughs> to balance itself. So what is not easy to manifest for the sign that craves balance is balance, right? There's always something that Libra has to look at, but Libra is the seventh sign. Seven is the highest number of protection and healing, right? So while you're graving harmony, you're also the sign that is strong enough to claim it, right? So see it through that energy. And now we're having a look at the messages from your guides through the filter of Venus being the planet of love for the sign of Libra. Now let's have a look. Okay, you get more than, than, than one energy, more than one card here. So, a couple of things. What the guides are saying to you is, right now, the energy around you is Jupiter. Jupiter is the happy-go-lucky planet. So, astronomically, the belief is that, that uh, Jupiter was the first planet to um, to form right after the so-called Big Bang um, one of many series <laughs> um, and therefore you have seen everything right and Jupiter by default because he has a positive outlook at all times is the planet that attracts abundance so rather than sitting with issues you attract abundance in like, let me overcome this, you know, if I have to lose friends here, you know, I will find new ones, right? If I, if I lose the house, I will get a new one, right? That sort of energy. If I need to really leave someone, I will. I'm ready. Something else will come along. So the positivity is important that you bring that to the party, right? And then understand, because you are governed by Venus, you will by default always suffer a little bit when things go south. It's just the way you tick, right? Now, ooh, <laughs> you have a new romantic cycle begins. A new romantic cycle begins. Now, 
I don't know anything about you. My, my belief is that people who need to hear the message ultimately will find the, the readings that are for them. Should you be in a relationship, and it says here a new romantic cycle begins, that does not necessarily spell the end of something, but it tells you that in order for the new cycle to begin, based on the fact that you had Jupiter beforehand, being lighthearted when making suggestions regarding what, to, what needs to be changed is half the battle, right? And should you not be in a relationship, because also this is your middle card, the one in the middle is always the most important because the other two are charging it, um, you really will uh, um, now be sent love and the universe knows that you want to be fulfilled in love because that middle card was also the new moon in Libra, which is your sign. And the new moon is about, maybe I should just, you know, take a bit of a break. Right? There's no illumination when the new moon comes in, right? And just rest a little bit and then from, from, from there on in, uh, reflect on what is working for you and what isn't, okay? And then outgoingly, um, what is really important is, should there be anything where you feel there will be consequences, major consequences to anything that you are now maybe doing? So if this is about a bigger thing, right, obviously, so if this is about, you know, if I really leave that energy, I have to fight for my share of the house, I have to sh fight for the children, right? It's just what I'm getting. The, ultimately, what the guides are saying is any major worries you have are mainly in your head because whatever worst case scenario you are now cooking up in your brain, it is not based on anything else but your reality because the energy here is nothing will come of the situation. So your worries should should really subside and you are the person that needs to take them away because Libra, you are looking for harmony and balance. So how come you allow these thoughts of, oh, this can all be shit um, into your brain, right? So reflect on if you are a person that is by default maybe prone to um, depression, negativity, that kind of stuff, right? Non-belief that, that, that better things can come because that also creates your reality. Okay? That was that, Libra. Moving to the next sign, Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. This is your August 2023 bonus reading with myself, Thomas Janak. You are watching Thomas's Tower readings. Please like, subscribe and share. And if you like my work, you can now buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium thomas. That's www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium thomas. Now, Scorpios, what we will do here, we will look at the messages that are coming through, through the filter of your governing planets. And you have two, which makes perfect sense because you are by default Scorpio. Scorpio is the animal that has the biggest fight or flight response. Therefore, you need to find a way of balancing yourself Hence, you have two planets. And uh, fittingly, you have Mars, which is the closest planet um, to the Sun, and you have Pluto, which is miles away, right? So you have opposite ends, which is, again, again an imprint of Scorpio. You can be at opposites and opposite ends of the spectrum. So you have these two planets. Now, here is what these planets do and tell you to apply to the messages that you are hearing. Pluto is telling you, it takes me 248 years to orbit the sun and because Pluto is erratic, it doesn't spend, Pluto does not spend a fixed amount of years in each sign. Any other planet spends the same amount of time in each sign. Pluto doesn't do that. It can spend between 18 and 30 years, depending on the, on the orbit and how he crawls upon it and, and, and along it. Um, so the point Pluto is making, Pluto is a bit of a rebel because it doesn't conform. right? And the first thing the guides are saying is, whatever the guides are saying, they are very serious. This is just advice. You take it or leave it. But 
should you find that you are a bit rigid when it comes to looking at at how to deal with problems what pluto teaches you is there might be a complete you know complete left wing uh, energy i don't even know what that what that means it just came into my mind right so um or offside energy so it could be out of left field and i think was the word that i was looking for anyway so there could be a solution that is completely bonkers to you at this point in time but that's the one that makes the most sense so allow yourself to have a wider orbit to see how to look at whatever the guides are saying in just a moment the next energy that you have is mars mars is the closest planet to the sun but not uh, sorry, <laughs> Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun, and then you have Mars and, 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 and Venus. It's just going off here. Mars is, a, is, is aware of your energy levels. So what the guides are saying is anything you're looking at, the first thing you should be doing is to assess whether or not it drains you, and if you already feel drained, right? So I have to say this because um, for a second here, the energy of Mercury came in. So um, Mercury, not your governing planet, but it came in here strongly. I literally saw Mercury, which is why I said, oh, the closest planet to the sun. Mercury is all about communication. And when they sent this to me and then sort of, you know, knocked me here for a bit. Um, this is also very likely something that is happening in your life where words mean fake all. Right? If you feel like, you know, this has been so exhausting because it's always the same. That is the situation you should look at when it comes to changes. Now, now we're asking the guides to be a bit more precise um, with regards to what it is. Oh, I love these guys. <laughs> because guess, guess what you have? You have communication as a topic. Makes perfect sense. But since I uh, was about to draw this card, I have no idea why my guides gave me Mercury. So I now have to say this twice because I would have said all this very likely without having to go to Mercury. Nonetheless, thank you guides. You just wanted to make sure that it doesn't slip my mind. Makes sense. You have communication. Obviously the planet of communication is Mercury. This is why it shows up here. Makes sense. Thank you. You know, because I, you know, when you do readings, I kind of sort of like, oh, maybe I'm, I'm losing it here. But it's not. It's all good. It's all in hand. I'm still connected to the guides. And, and this one proves it. Anyway, you have, you have communication. So they're just confirming, yes, it is that topic that you find, you know, words alone don't really deal with it. And then the outgoing energy, or the, or the last thing you need to hear about it, is be bold and make the first move. So this might not be the first move you're making because in the energy here, when, when, when communication has been highlighted so strongly, this might be something that is, has been going on for quite some time. But the be bold part, um, and, and so when it says be bold, make the first move, it just means like, you know, if you're waiting for something to be finalized, if you wait for another party to sort of acknowledge certain things before you think okay now i'm in that position that i wanted to be in all the guys are saying is be bold right what i'm getting is it's just the way i'm getting this it's just the way my guides talk to me i'm getting the sense of not worrying about the future and get yourself out of whatever situation has the tendency to drain you because your energy is not really all that great. And because Scorpio has a fight or flight energy, it's not so simple for you when it comes to um, knowing what to do at times. That's all I got, my dear Scorpions. Thank you so much. This was your August 2023 bonus reading with the added energy of seeing it through your governing planet's energy. Okay? Ready? Ready. So, now we're moving on to the next star sign, which is Sagittarius. Sagittarians. This is your August 2023 bonus uh, video or reading with myself, Thomas Janak. What we do here is we will look at the message that the guides give us through the filter of your governing planet. Now, where am I? 
Whatever I just said, I, I, I'm, I'm losing it here a little. I, I was just with Scorpio, I record all of this in one go, so pardon me. We're now with Sagittarius. I hope I said that right. Anyway, we're looking at Sagittarius, Sagittarius, Sagittarius. <laughs> and your governing planet is Jupiter. Jupiter is the first planet to ever form once the universe exploded. And it's just a theory, but it makes a lot of sense. Here's why. There are a trillion of stars in the universe. Scientists believe that there is 400 billion stars in our solar system. And yet, per year, we get maximum three new stars forming. Now, when the universe itself is only, you know, 13 billion years old, when you, when you divide the 400 billion through, the, through three stars, it becomes 122 billion. So, either the universe is way older than we understand it, which is one option, and the other option is that at some stage, even though we know that the Big Bang wasn't a Big Bang as such, a lot of stars must have formed all at the same time, right? If that makes sense, because now as the universe expands and gets a bit calmer, we're having less stars. The reason why this is important to Sagittarius is because Sagittarius is the archer. Now the archer is very closely related energetically to Chiron, the wounded healer, because in the origin story of your sign Sagittarius, the archer was a um, minotaur, something with Tor. Anyway, it was half men, <laughs> half horse. There's a, there's a term for it. Um, can't remember. Centaur. Centaur. That was the word, right? Anyway, half men, upper half, half horse, lower half, right? So back in the day when you were, when you were, um, when Sagittarius was first mentioned, they literally named it the half-breed. And because it was just a depiction, it is not seen, was not seen, um, as meaning you are less, if that makes sense. Somehow the, the, um, the beings from the, from the Forbidden Forest in Harry Potter come into my mind here and someone says, I think Malfoy, uh, says to Hermione, where the fuck is that coming from? Anyway, Malfoy says to Hermione, how dare you speak to me, you half-blood or something? And somehow it reminds me of that half-breed. But it was just a depiction. It's just half man, half horse. The problem is that in your depiction, Zeus asked the centaur if they want to go hunting together. And then when they were in the bushes, <laughs> Zeus, some god he is, only saw the back half of Sagittarius, of, of the, the centaur, and shot him. And, and Normally, the wounded healer picks himself up together. Um, but in the depiction of Sagittarius, the centaur never fully recovered. What that means is, once you are hurt, you stay hurt for a long time. And what that all means is, because you, you are the archer, you decide and have to consciously decide how much energy do you actually give to the issues that come your way? Do you prolong it? Do you not deal with it? Do you deal with it sort of in, in blocks? Your job is to be straightforward. You shoot the arrow with a lot of oomph, if that makes sense. Oomph, oomph. Um, you get there quicker. Anyway, let's have a look what the guys are saying is, you have the energy of Capricorn and the energy of, of uh, the full moon in Leo. Now, interesting, because Capricorn is associated with three different elements, right? So when we think of Capricorn, we, we think of Capricorn as the, the mountain goat. When, as a matter of fact, when, when, when the um, constellation was named, it was named after a race of sea goats. And when you take it away from Western astrology and you take it to the Vedic astrology, in their timeline, the timeline that Capricorn falls in, 
it's still Capricorn, but, but Capricorn's association is actually an alligator. So Capricorn is associated with three beings, the centaur, hence the archer, hence Sagittarius, is made up of two beings. So there is a lot of things where Sagittarians find it hard sometimes to know exactly what to do and who you are. And all the guides are trying to say to you, like, you everything. You are so multi-layered. Why are you looking at what, what, what distracts you, what separates you, rather than focusing on your strengths? That is what you need to do. And Capricorn's energy is about achieving, because when you have the strengths of the Trinity, and trial is one of the strongest um, aspects, if not the strongest, in astrology, what the guides are saying is, understand how strong you are. It is in your strengths. Once, you, once you're in your strengths, you achieve whatever it is you want to come. This is your first message. And then the, the other message is the full moon in Leo. Leo is governed by the sun. Leo is, is, is powerful. Um, and while this sounds a bit wrong, because Leo by default is a good sign, right? If that makes sense. But because you have, they, they run a pride, there's a bit of a wordplay here. Don't let your pride get in the way. Now that is twofold. I don't see this as a message that your ego gets in the way, but your pride is what and who you look after. Make your decision based on what you want, not on what you feel is important for them. Right? Really, really important. Anyway, that's all I got for Sagittarius. Thank you so much. Next star sign. We're now looking at Capricorn. Capricorns, welcome. This is your August 2023 bonus reading with myself, Thomas Young. Like you are watching Thomas's Tower readings. Please like, subscribe, and share. And if you like my work, you can now buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium Thomas. That's www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium Thomas. Now, what we do here, Capricorn, we will look at or we will ask you to look at the message you hear through the filter of your governing planet. Now, your governing planet, um, Capricorn, where are we here? Yeah, sorry, I'm not with it. Oh, I wrote something on that piece of paper that shouldn't be there. <laughs> anyway, there's only three signs left, Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces. Now, Capricorn, you are governed by Saturn. Saturn is one of three spiritual teachers. So whatever the guides are saying to you, see it from a spiritual point of view, see it from the point of your highest self to understand the message. And Saturn also is a planet that teaches through restrictions, which means whatever the guides ask you to look at, look at it, right, with the energy that it needs, but do less when it comes to explaining yourself. This has to do with the fact that Saturn is known for having these rings, which apparently have to do with needing protection. But Saturn is a gas giant. You don't need protection because there is nothing in Saturn that can be broken or damaged that makes sense. You do not need protection. You just need to be who you are, right? So that in itself is a message here, <laughs> but the guides add now to it and they ask you to see it through that very filter. And they only give me one card here and uh, the, the, the or one message here as an add-on to the message that they just gave you by talking about your governing or ruling planet. You have the message of home. The message of home. And what that means is, is about understanding that what you really belong to is not necessarily always reflected through who you made, the people that you created, you know, family, children, or the people that you picked as partners. Home lies within. Be okay 
with who you are because truth needs no defense whatever the heck people say to you give them the stinky finger whatever you call them here right do not take criticism understand that do not take criticism there's nothing wrong with you but everything works better for your sign capricorn by understanding i am so multi-layered and yet I'm all of these things and truth needs no defense. That's all I got for Capricorn. Two signs left. We're now moving into Aquarius. You are watching Thomas's Tower readings, August 2023 bonus reading for your very sign of Aquarius. I trust that you have watched the video for your sign for the month. This is just an add on, even though not really an add-on it's just a an extra energy and what the guides are asking you to do here in this reading again you can't make that shit up this is a really long video if i had just asked for the messages we would have been through ages ago but the guides tell me what to do i only work here literally and the guides asked me to ask you guys when you watch that video to see it through the filter of your governing planet and your governing planet uh, aquarius is Uranus can't pronounce it very well Mercury and Uranus are gender fluid gender neutral planets whatever the guides are saying has no male or female connotation it is much wider it is much less defined and much less confined see everything the guides are saying to you in a minute through the eyes of i can be very free here provided i do not worry about what is coming if i say something make certain changes because uranus as a planet as an imprint to your sign uranus is the planet of sudden and unexpected change and when you are just free and just go with how you truly feel it can lead to changes that are massive and all the guides are saying is that's why uranus is your governing planet so you embrace that change rather than being somewhere where you're not appreciated okay again that's that's a message in itself and now we're asking the guides to give you more and again just like with the sign before you you only have one message now you have uh, Juno, smaller, smaller planet, and partnership. What the guides are saying to you is, when you look at any partnership you're in, and that could be a love relationship or a work relationship, it's non-defined. Nothing here is defined. Everything is quite loose. So whatever comes to your mind now as you're watching this video is what you have to then look at, right? Trust your intuition. And all the guides are saying is, in the partnership and ships, partnerships that you are in, understand that what doesn't work for your energy that you agreed to experience, you decided, you decide when you're being born, therefore you decide on that time slot that makes Uranus your governing planet, Uranus is all about changes, massive changes, unexpected change, massive change. So your job is to understand that if things have been the same for a long time, that in itself might be the reasons why things are not working. Okay, Aquarius, that's that. Thank you so much for watching. Moving on to the final star sign, we are now at the sign of Pisces, which is governed by Neptune. You used to be governed by Jupiter as well. I don't give a damn that Jupiter has now been removed. Jupiter is in my energy when I deal with astrology still very close to Pisces. So I will tell you about the two planets because what you're being asked here is to listen to the message that the guides will give you in a minute. But see them through the filter of your governing planet. <laughs> Neptune 
is the planet that governs Pisces. Neptune is the god of the sea, if that makes sense. And you are a water sign, right? So what the guides are saying is, you have a very, very supportive energy around you at all times, right? Now, Pisces is the sign of the dreamer. And sometimes we get carried away. The depiction, I'm a Pisces myself. The depiction of Pisces is two fish, fishes that swim in opposite ends, but are actually connected. So sometimes we go off, hence the sign of the dreamer, and then come back to things, which sometimes can complicate things, which is why Neptune, the god of the sea, has a trident. And when he, when he has a trident, and you have probably seen this in some, uh, um, what they're called, Marvel movies or something, well, there's a, a term for it, or maybe a, a company that does uh, movies about it. Anyway, the trident, when it comes into water, there's a lot of electricity goes goes, and then shit happens. <laughs> so you are well capable, capable of dealing with stuff. And Jupiter is the planet, even though now not officially counted any longer, um, that is the planet of, uh, of um, lightheartedness, you know, fun. So what the guides are saying is, do your thing, don't procrastinate, don't allow yourself to feel trapped, don't be trapped as a matter of fact. Um, but go about anything that comes your way that needs changing with a bit of tongue-in-cheek because that is the energy of your governing planets. Therefore, listen to the message that is coming now through that filter. And the message that we're getting is sustainability. There might be things around you that are threatening your livelihood, if that makes sense. Um, maybe someone thinks, you know, um, you don't deserve what you have, that kind of stuff. And it might put you a bit under pressure because you don't know what's happening and where you're going. You might be at crossroads, right? But you have sustainability. See, there's a being here that just manifests, right? And goes like, whatever, right? So, should there be people that employ you um, and you feel without them, I don't get the means to pay my rent, right? You give it power by believing this to be true. Now the person goes, I just sit here and I manifest a positive outcome. Don't go into worry. You have been through so much, you will always find a way. And in the depiction, and you can see that here, every time there's a person depicted that does um, meditation, they always sit like this, right? And these there, there are pressure points here. When you press them and then release them, your whole system goes into alignment. So that is a really powerful um, movement, just having your, your index finger and your thumb together and then releasing it. What the guides are saying is, let it run through your system. Let the worry run through your system. And whatever is happening, is happening. If someone, you know... Um, is letting you go, if someone closes the door, you will find a way to talk to whoever you need to talk to and uh, find another way to make things run. And you are sustained by the universe, okay? Even though, yes, when you're in that situation, by default, Pisces, because of the dreaming energy and, and I'm walking away from stuff, sometimes Pisceans can feel quite alone and isolated in a topic. Um, which makes things a bit more uh, scary. But all the guides are saying is, whatever ego play, someone plays, it's their karma and you will be looked after. Now, that concludes the, um, the bonus readings. Thank you all so much for <laughs> hanging out with me. It's been a super long reading, was not expecting this. Anyway, it is time-stamped. So you don't have to sit here and watch the whole thing, right? And I'm letting you go um, with my tagline because it is the truth. The sun is the ruler of the day. The moon is the ruler of the night. But you are the ruler of your own destiny. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.